today's lecture we will start discussing fundamentals of logic. Now, in logic we will be dealing with statements rather than numbers. Now, a particular type of statements are called propositions. Let us define propositions more formally. any declarative sentence to which it is meaningful to assign one and only one truth value true or false is said to be a proposition. Now, we have to be careful that each and e every sentence is not a proposition. The key feature of a proposition is that it has to be either true or false and if a proposition is not true then it is false and if it is not false then it is true. Let us look at one example of a proposition. We have written down three uh, two uh, propositions. The first proposition is denoted by P and the second proposition is denoted by Q. Now, the proposition P states that there are seven days in a week. Now, this is of course, a sentence and uh, this is true. So, we know that uh, this cannot be true and false 
at the same time and we know that it is meaningful to say that it is true. Thus, P is a proposition. The next sentence is Q, which states that a week has more number of days than a month. Now, this sentence is obviously false, but it is a proposition because it is a declarative sentence which has a truth value, which in this case is false. Let us look at another sentence, we denote by R, which is an interrogation, what is your name? Now, this sentence cannot have a truth value, because that is meaningless and hence this sentence is not a proposition. Therefore, we see that all propositions are sentences, but all sentences are not propositions. Another thing that we notice here is that we can write uh, propositions, uh, we can denote propositions by symbols like P, Q and R. We generalize this fact and introduce propositional variables. A variable which can take propositions as values. Are called propositional variables. We will denote the propositional variables by small letters P, Q, R and so on. Now, if we have some basic propositions, we can connect these propositions by using the so called logical connectives and build up compound propositions. The basic connectives are 5 in number, we will note down these 5 basic connectives. The 
the first connective is called conjunction, it is also called and and denoted by a wedge. The second connective is called disjunction, it is also called or and denoted by B. The third connective is not or negation. and it is denoted by either an overline or a tilde or a symbol like this prefixed before a propositional variable. Four, conditional This is also known as if dash then dash, it is denoted by an arrow like this or sometimes an arrow like this. The fifth one is biconditional. This is also known as if and only if or just if with two f's, it is denoted by a both sided arrow or a both sided arrow like this. We will now one by one check the effect of these connectives to the propositions. 1. Conjunction Suppose P and Q are two propositions the conjunction P Q is the statement P and Q. We denote this compound statement or this compound proposition as P wedge Q. Now, since this is a proposition, we must know definitely when it is true and when it is false. P wedge Q is true only when B 
both P and Q are true. Otherwise, P wedge Q is false. Now, we can translate this thing to a table which is called a truth table and which is very useful in understanding these uh, connectives and more complicated compound propositions. We write the propositional variables p, q and also write the, the statement p and q. The possible values of p, q are f, f that is false, false, t, f, f, t and t, t. P conjunction Q or P and Q will have the truth values F, F, F and T. Here T means true and F means false. This table is called a truth table and this specifies the truth values of uh, the compound proposition P and Q. Next, we move on to disjunction. Again, we take two propositions P and Q and P or Q is called disjunction of P Q or simply P disjunction Q which is denoted by P v q. Now, this statement is true only when at least one of p or q is true. So, we write Now, we go to the truth table of P or Q
the third connective is called negation. This is a, a unary operation that is it, uh, it involves only one uh, propositional variable. Suppose P is a proposition negation of P or simply not of P denoted by either overline or tilde P or this is a proposition which is true when P is false and false when P is true. The corresponding truth table will look like this. We have P false and true and negation of P true when P is false and false when P is true. Next we have conditional Now, this is called uh, in uh, common day language as if then. So, if something comma then something else. The proposition P implies Q denoted by P arrow Q is true if q is true whenever p is true. The truth table of P implies Q is like this. Now, when P is true and Q is true, that means that P implies Q is true. Now, 
when p is false then i cannot prove that p implies q is false because if we have to prove that p implies q is false we have to show one instance where p is true but q is false since we cannot prove that p implies q is false it will have the truth value true so in case p is false in both these cases p implies q is true whereas if p is true and q is false that means that p implies q is not true because p implies q forces q to be true when p is true therefore we will write false over here and of course when p is true and q is true p implies q is true the last conjunction last connective is called biconditional now if p and q are propositions p if and only if q denoted by p is called the biconditional and p if and only if q is essentially conjunction of p implying q and q implies p now if we consider the truth table of biconditional we will have pq taking all the possible values and p implying q is true true f and true q implying p is true f true and true and therefore the biconditional which is conjunction of these two propositions is true f f and t
Now, next we will take propositional variables and use these logical connectives to build up compound statements or compound propositions. Now, let us see examples of that. Suppose we have propositional variables p q r consider a compound proposition f p q r p and q or not of r. Now, these type of expressions will be called propositional functions. If we can find out the truth table of these propositional functions, uh, for example, for the one uh, that I have written just now, we can build up the truth table in this way. We write the propositional variables, then we start writing the terms P and Q and R naught. Uh, now, all the we list down all the possible truth values of p q r, which are f f f, f f t, f t f, f t t, t f f, t f t, t t f, t t t. Now, first column at the right hand side is P and Q, which is true if and only if both P and Q are true. Therefore, here it will have F, the next row also F, then F, 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 F T, T, and R naught is T F T F T F T F. Now, in the last column, we will calculate the function F P Q R, which is equal to P and Q or not of r, this is t f t f t f t and t. Once we have discussed the propositional functions, which are also called compound statements or uh, compound propositions, then 
we introduce the idea of equivalence of propositional functions. propositional functions are logically equivalent if they have the same truth table let us give an example we start with two propositional variables p and q and consider two propositional functions p implies q and not of p or q. Let us draw the truth table of each of them. So, P implies Q, we have already seen that it is T T F T and not of P or Q is, let us look at the first row, P is F over here, therefore, not of P is T. So, the or will be T, similarly the next row the or will be T, this one is false because not of P is going to be false false and q is false and lastly it is going to be true t. Therefore, we see that p implies q and not of p or q both have the same truth table. Therefore, these two statements are equivalent. We write equivalent statements as uh, p implying q equivalent to that is we write three parallel straight lines uh, equivalent to not of p q. Further we observe another point if we consider the biconditional between uh, these two equivalent statements that is p implying q by conditional not of p or q we will see that this will be always true now we introduce one more notion uh, that is of uh, a tautology if there is a propositional function which is true irrespective of the values of the propositional variables <coughs> involved in it, 
then it is called a tautology. From what we have discussed, it is not difficult to see that if two propositional functions are equivalent, then if we form another function uh, by connecting these two propositional functions by a biconditional, then that resulting function is going to be a tautology. Now, if we have a propositional function which is never true, then it is called a contradiction or an absurdity. And the usual propositions which are sometimes true and sometimes false are called contingency. By this, we come to the end of today's lecture. Thank you.